Everybody thinks they have the next million dollar idea. Ah! And maybe they do, but do they have what it takes to make their dream a reality? I'm Patrick Raymond. And I'm Steve Greenberg. And in the world of invention, we're experts. This week, we're in the Midwest to check out three kitchen inventions. It's called Mary's Marinating Stick. Ooh, let's check it out. We'll test two to see which one has what it takes to pitch to our contacts in New York. The market potential is tremendous. The biggest companies in the business. Why would I buy yours instead of somebody else's? They'll decide if they'll buy into it, take it nationwide, and make the inventor's dream come true. Our reputations are literally on the line. And for the inventor, it's all or nothing. There are over 8,000 new kitchen gadgets hitting the shelves every year. And we're helping aspiring inventors tap into the gold mine. Let's do it. OK. We are Invention Hunters. Well, we're here outside of Chicago, and we're gonna check out an inventor. Her name is Mary, and she has something called a marinating stick. I don't know much more about it, but I can't wait to find out what it's all about. All right. Hey. Well, hello, hello, I'm Mary. Welcome. Come Hi, in. Mary. First of all, the house smells like my grandmother's house. It's just that great, great smell. So you've got a new way of marinating meats, huh? Yes, I have a, a new invention that God gave me. It's called Mary's Marinating Stick. Oh, let's check it out. Let me see what it looks like. The problem, getting juicy flavor into meats requires planning ahead to marinate. Mary's solution, a stainless steel tube filled with spices that marinates while you're cooking. About 18 years ago, I was sitting down writing a recipe with my ink pen, and God was giving me recipes. He always gave me recipes, and, and he told me, he said, if you take that ink pen that you're writing with, he said, stick holes all the way in it from one end to the other one. He said, put your aromatics, your ginger, your celery, and your onions and stuff inside this stick, stick it inside your meat, and proceed to cook it. Would you bring me the meat over there that I already cooked? And it does smell good. I can see that. You twist and just pull them right on out. Oh, that's great. That's what you do. Let's try this out. Mm. Mary, I'll come over to your house for Thanksgiving anytime. This okay. is great turkey. Are you looking for a roommate? Absolutely delicious. Super moist. You can taste all the seasoning right through it. There, there could be downsides. We have to, you know, temper our enthusiasm, OK? We can't let the warmth go to our head. What are you selling these for, Mary, right now? They're $29.95 plus tax. Two of them for $29. It's a little high, I think. Have you been uh, selling you. these already? Yes, we've been selling on the website. We're trying to get them in stores now. Okay. We just begin to try to put them in stores. How many have you sold? Maybe a couple of hundred. Okay. But on the inside... From a functional perspective, she has the three main elements you want in a kitchen invention. Simplicity, ease of use, ease of understanding. I think it's a terrific idea. Patrick and I would like to borrow it. You look like a responsible person. Um, uh, it's questionable, but... <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Indiana. Hello, Kansas. Our next inventor has been tinkering in his basement for years, and he thinks he just might have the next big thing. The man cave. <laughs> so this is the shooter broom? The problem? Standard coolers are boring. Derek's solution? A remote control cooler that shoots out cans and livens up the party. So I'm sitting out tailgating. Whoa, it dawned on me. This is the perfect atmosphere for shooting cans out of something, you know? Uh, so I decided to build it into a cooler, and then the shooter brew was born. Not having your beer can fly out of your cooler did not strike me as the most pressing problem facing the culinary and food industry. Patent pending or patented? Patented. Patented? Yeah. Okay, yep. good. Derek, I have to tell you, I'm a little thirsty. I want to see this thing shoot. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hold on, I see this over here. <laughs> Am I going to need this? One, two, three. Whoa. <laughs> Very cool. I loved it. It was love at first sight for me. I mean, I think the idea of sending a brew through the air and catching it, that's just, you know, that's great. I loved it. So, <laughs> wow, that was fun. Sure, the product is fun and silly, but fun, silly products get lots of press. They go on late night talk shows, they get into magazines, and free PR equals sales. So it's battery powered, it's got this spring-loaded catapult here, and it's gonna engage this dog leg lever, which allows one can out at a time. And then it comes up, hits the trigger, and launches the can. Put all the ice in here, and that keeps all the cans cold. How many cans can this hold? This one holds almost uh, 24. OK, that's pretty good. So how much have you spent so far to get to this point? Uh, about 15 to 20 grand. So to sell these in retail, we're looking at about $195. So my cost of goods needs to be around 50 bucks or lower. 
$195 at retail is too low. We like to see a manufactured cost to be one-fifth of the retail price. Well, we're going to borrow it? Yeah, let's And we it. will check it out, and we'll get back with you. All right, okay? that sounds great. With Derek's lone prototype on board, we're hitting the road again onto Illinois. Well, our next inventor is a gentleman named Gary, who's come up with something sort of to solve a, a grease problem. Hey, Gary. Hi. Come on in. I'm Steve. Gary Allen. So, Gary, these are absorbies. Tell me a little bit about them. What, what, what's their function? Well. Absorbies, simply put, absorbs grease with ease. The problem? Disposing of excess grease from cooking is a mess. Gary's solution is called Absorbies, thick absorbent pads that soak up the grease in a jiffy. I'd like to give you a quick demonstration. Gary cooks up some fresh fish and some ground beef. And you can put it right onto the Absorbies. Oh, yeah, look at that. To show how Absorbies soaks up excess cooking grease. So this is what the best part of Absorbies is. You can just Put it in the food, it's FDA approved. And you can just wipe this dry. And for those people who's uh, conscious about how much fat they have in their diet, you can take as much out as you want. It's just kind of absorbing the grease as he's wiping it around. He's got a product that does do what it says it does, and for a sort of a niche market, it might work. Okay, and then when you're done with this, just toss this in the trash. Yes. What material is this? It's a milled fluff pulp. It's similar Say that again? To a milled fluff pulp, similar to a paper towel, but really thick. Gary basically took the same raw material they make into paper towels and diapers and designed a new product out of it. Pretty smart. I was selling for about $1.79 a package. A package like this costs right about 75 cents. For four. For four. Four big ones, and that's uh, 16 uses. $1.79 at retail sounds about right, but the profit margin is way too low. I got about thirty dollars to $35,000 invested in it. Uh, I recouped a lot of it when I started selling the product. I sold some on the internet, and now I depleted. I'm getting ready to make another order. Thank you very much. The fat-conscious health angle might work on this one. We'll have to think about it. Three ingenious inventions. Two will go on to the next step, and only one will get to New York for the big pitch. I'm afraid we're going to have to pass. We're impressed with all three inventions we've scouted. Mary's marinating sticks, Shooter Brew, and Absorbies. We'll only test two for market viability. One of them will have to go. Well, we talked it over. One of the things that Absorbies has going for it is its performance. It does what you say it does. The only way people are going to learn about it is they're going to need to be retaught because right now they're doing it another way. Yes. They're using paper towels, which are really cheap. For them to switch over to something like this, that means a lot of advertising and a lot of money. Yes. I'm afraid we're going to have to pass. That's understandable. When the guys told me that, it, you know, it catches me off guard for a second, but I'll learn from it and I'll tweak it and keep it going. He has sold 3,000 of them and hasn't gotten a lot of reorders, and that's a really bad sign. But it's time to move on and time to eat. We're in downtown Chicago at Rosebud's Steakhouse with executive chef Michael Ponzio. He's helping us put Mary's marinating sticks to the test. What did you find? In terms of the stick, had you seen anything like it before? Uh, not like this, no. I mean, when I was little, my mother used to shove garlic, garlic cloves inside yeah, the roast and everything. Yeah. But this took some time to get used to. Um, we tried to do it with some thinner cuts and actually put it in a steak and things. And we had found it worked best when we actually slow roast it in the meat so that the juice can pass through over time and reabsorb into the meat and everything. You experimented a bit. Oh, yeah, we played quite a bit with it. Enough talk, let's eat. Is there enough meat here for us to test it out? It's like we're in King Arthur's court. Roasted ham and even a huge leg of lamb. Each meat was prepared both with and without Mary's marinating stick. Much more flavor, absolutely. You know what I found was amazing also is that it was just one marinating stick in this huge hunk I of know. meat. But all the aromatics were in every bite. Overall, tasting is believing. So she's on to something. There's definitely more flavor right. with the marinating stick. No question about it. On a grade of 1 to 10 in terms of an invention, what would you give this? I think it's very clever. I'd definitely give it a solid 8. I think it was a very clever invention. Chef Michael makes the point that with the marinating stick, there was some discoloration, and it didn't work so great with thin pieces of meat or with fish. And that had me worried. I mean, that's a lot of people make fish and, and work with thin steaks, and obviously it doesn't work for that. So I'm a little concerned when I hear that. 
For our next test, we're bringing the Shooter Brood to tailgate with some hardcore University of Kansas fans. They already have a customized can view lens. What more do you need? We'll find out. We've come bearing gifts. Yeah. Come on in, come on right. in. Ready? Here with the first Shooter Brew. On your mark, get set, Shooter Brew. Beautiful, beautiful. There's no question that the Shooter Brew added something to the tailgate, which is already a great event, right? I'm thirsty, I just finished a beer, I need another one. Okay, here we go, I'm pushing the button, and... erupts in laughter and applause. There's no doubt about it, Shooter Brew injects fun into a tailgate party. Yeah. <laughs> At what price do you think you'd consider buying it? $200. $150, 200 bucks? Definitely over 100 bucks. That's a pretty cool thing. Okay. When I asked folks what they were willing to pay, it ranged from 100 to 150, maybe 200. I think one guy who had had a few brews said 300. 300 bucks. 300. But he had to sit down. I had my doubts. I thought Shooter Brew was a little bit silly when I first saw it. But you know what? Silly can sell. Oh, Shooter Brew brought laughter and joy and fun to an already joyful event. And I think that's a very strong positive for the product. We have two innovative products, two positive test results. Which would you choose, the party enhancer or the flavor enhancer? Coming up, one will get to New York for the big pitch. We've been feasting and partying on this invention scouting trip to the Midwest. But only one inventor can come with us to New York to make the big pitch. It's time to tell our inventors about their test results. Now, the results are good, but they're not perfect. And you know, we both are very fond of you. You're an amazing person. Ultimately, though, we make our decision not based on the inventor, but on the invention. Right. And we put a lot of thought into this. And we love your product, and we want to take you and your product to New York present it to a large company, and hopefully Yay. get you a big deal. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Mary has a big family on hand to congratulate her. Yeah, I, I don't tell nobody I am. I tell them God did. The idea is, is God absolutely God-given, God but you took right. it all the way. It's what he hard wanted part. me to do. <laughs> Choosing Mary's invention was a no-brainer. But we had so much fun testing out the other invention, the Shooter Brew, that we've been considering pitching it to our New York contacts as well. I was amazed. Remember, I told you I thought your product was a little silly. Well, sure. silly was fun. Awesome. I I'm very, very fond of the product. But after some discussion, we've decided to pass. OK. The biggest issue is the price point. When you're dealing with a small market, it's even more important to have a right. bigger upside as far as the profit goes on it. Mm -hmm. And we don't see that at this point. The, the costs of making it have to come down yeah. to really satisfy this niche. So that's yeah, I'm actually cool. encouraged uh, by the feedback that they gave me. There's a big opportunity in tailgating. It's a huge market, and it's not necessarily served by any big players. If it costs you $50 to manufacture one today, mm -hmm. in terms of pure cost, Call us when you hit 25. Well done. Thank you. Time to take Mary's marinating stick to the Big Apple. Our first order of business is to visit our friends at Swerve for a quick packaging makeover. Ultimately, the product is all about flavor, and the packaging really has to get that across. The team at Swerve only has a short time frame to get this redesign done. Our meeting with Lifetime Brands is locked in, and Mary's already packing her bags. They get right to it. The first thing we've done is ditch the plastic, getting the product out there so you can touch it, you can feel it. This is all about delicious. Absolutely. This first one here, though I like where Mary's positioned in it, it looks like barbecue. I think this one here actually proves that you can Let's hope the redesign helps us win over the executives at Lifetime Brands. Lifetime Brands, here we go. See what God got to say about it. This is your Mary has traveled from Indiana for the big pitch, along with her son and her business partner. I only hope she likes the new look. It can all culminate in a deal right here. So I want to show her the new packaging. Very excited about it. I'm thinking she's going to go crazy when she sees it. This is the original packaging, but we thought we could make it a little bit better. What do you think? 
It's uh, different. <laughs> and the reaction's sort of like a, eh. Where do you get that picture from? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you that. Okay. Packaging doesn't matter to me at all. All I want to do is just sell it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna do it. I have faith in God. So he gave me the steak and we're gonna sell it. We're gonna make some money. Okay, let's do it. I'm Mary, ready. Yes. what's behind that door could change your life forever. You ready? I'm ready. Now that Mary's marinating sticks has a new look and a new name, we're ready to pitch it to Lifetime Brands, one of the largest housewares manufacturers in the world. We'll be taking it to the board, Executive Vice President Dan Siegel and his team. A deal today would give Mary a percentage of every unit sold worldwide. It might make her a millionaire. Mary, welcome to Lifetime Brands. So what do you have to offer us today? I have an invention called, I named it Mary's Marinating Stick that God gave me back in 1994. Just like we used to drive, you know, horse and buggers, now we're flying airplanes and jets. This is your jet. So you take this and you cut up your onions and garlic and celery and you put it on the inside of this. Fatten it up and put it in your meat and proceed to cook it. What size? piece of meat you do you need, need two for this, these are what 10 is inch, one cover this is 10 inches and I would advise you to buy a piece of meat 11 inches so it's not for just me making a bologna sandwich I have to buy a piece of meat that's big enough for a family have you looked at other devices on the market that do similar things no I've seen, I haven't seen anything like this I looked at other things on the market but I have never seen nothing like this what about flavor injectors have you compared it to a flavor injector how that yeah, would work versus that. this stick I've seen those things okay you know with flavor injectors they don't really the liquid go where you put it it doesn't go all the way through the meat so how many years ago did you start this process in 94 in 94 in 94 I want to point out sure she actually went back to school so she could learn how to, to do get the patent. patent. So that took a long part Very of the impressive. process. 2004, she finally got the patent. In a store right next to her hometown in Gary, Indiana, she is sold 200 units at one supermarket. Mary, were you in the store selling this? No, not me. It's I wasn't just, in that You weren't stick. personally there. You just had it on the shelf, right. and it was selling that many units Wait, in a little year. radio spot. Okay. They did some promotion in their church. Do you like the name of this? I know it's, you know, it's your name, and it's your thing versus having, say, a celebrity chef endorsement. Have you thought about that? No, I have not thought about that, but what do you think about it? I think it's a great idea. Unfortunately, it's all about celebrity names and celebrity chefs, and Mary wants her name on the packaging. And she's the kind of inventor that might just squelch the whole deal because her name's not on it. I'm a little worried. Mary, if you can give us a few minutes to talk over this. Yes, I will. All right. What'd you guys think? It's unique. It's a real solution to a problem. There's nothing else like it out there. But is it big enough? Like the market size, is it big enough? I know a lot of people marinate, but is this truly big enough? I think we have to look at the retail. I know she sold a lot of units um, in the one store, but I think that's a little bit high. Somebody is probably there helping sell it. So the question is putting it on a retail shelf, again, as is, I think would be a very difficult sell. It's hard not to become emotionally invested in someone as sweet as Mary. Yeah. So we wanted her picture and her name on the product. I still love it. I, I still love the picture of her, and I love those rays coming off from the picture. It talks about her divine inspiration and the way that picture's done. But you know done. what, at the end of the day, right? It's, this is what it's about. It's Mary said and it. So it's about if, this. If, Absolutely. if they want someone else's name on it, then that's it's, the way in, it goes. it's in Mary's best interest. Absolutely. Overcoming right. that. So it's just like another gadget. Right. Stuck in a drawer, something else that you bought that you really didn't need. Okay. Anything else? I don't have I'm anything good. else. Let's bring Mary back in. It's been so great to meet you. We really appreciate your presentation. But we have some comments that we'd like you to hear. There are some problems with it that do need to be worked out. It's very sharp at the edge. It's a little difficult to open and close. And we really need to make sure that the item jumps off the wall, that people understand what it does. There are some serious concerns here. Um, 
but we also feel that it, they can be built upon and maybe with our expertise we can actually work some magic here and make it more retail friendly. What if I told you that we could take it from Gary, Indiana in the one store and sell it to thousands and thousands of stores across the country? That would sound good. That's good. Well, congratulations. We want to take on your product. Congratulations. That's great news. <laughs> Wow, that's terrific. Oh, thank you. Y'all had me scared. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, that's great. Dan, God thanks so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is. Very big news. I want you all to meet the people. Come on. Tell the news. They accepted the stick. <laughs> we'll have to come to an agreement about the name, but it looks like Mary's, or somebody's, marinating stick is on the way. It's going to be in thousands of stores across the country and maybe around the planet. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I am a happy cookie. I am really, really happy.